Fry. Hello, once again, YouTube, Andy with you with another little video. So in today's episode, after dropping off at Heathrow Airport at about 11 o'clock this morning, I then had a pickup at 3 p.m. this afternoon in Basingstoke. Now, there wasn't any point in me driving all the way home to Swindon to come all the way back out again to Basingstoke. So what I'm doing now, because I've got a few hours to kill, I'm just going to be scrolling around the Basingstoke area looking at things of interest so I can go make a video. Anyway, let's get into it and see what we come up with. I'm not too familiar what's in and around the area. So what I'll do, I'm gonna take a drive down that neck of the woods. And if I see something interesting, I'll go and check it out. Uh, we found ourselves a little place to go, uh, which is about a 38 minute drive from where we are uh, at present so I'm up here at Fleet Services and we've got to go down the M3 motorway come off at uh, looks like Basingstoke and well perhaps carry on actually carry on down the uh, well, there's two ways to go you can either go up that way through Basingstoke or carry on down they're both 38 minutes long uh, and then we're gonna go down we're gonna go place here called bear with me I'll get a name for it uh, or perhaps I won't get a name for it. <laughs> I'll find out the name and I'll come back to you later. But anyway, it's on the it's on the Berkshire Hampshire border, and uh, this particular place is called Beacon Hill Fort. Tell you what, uh, reading on the reviews, it says that this place you need a good standard of fitness to get up here. I've only just started, I'm almost done in. This place most definitely is not wheelchair accessible. Oh well, onwards and upwards. Right, I am I'm worn out. I seriously am worn out after coming up that hill. You need a decent level of fitness. You know, coming coming up's difficult. I think coming down is going to be treacherous. If I slip and make one false move, I could break an ankle, I could break a leg, or whatever else, uh, become immobile. I'm gonna die up here. I'm gonna die up here because literally nobody's gonna, nobody's gonna find me because I'm, I'm the only car in the car park at the moment. And uh, I've gotta take extra care, especially going down. I can limit my time when I'm up there because right now it is very, very, very cold. Yeah, it's gonna be a quick flight. It's quite windy. Uh, I'm not gonna to put two drones up today just because, um, well, it just takes a lot longer to set up. Uh, so I'm just gonna do just the one. This is Beacon Hill, Iron Age Hill Fort. It's an impressive hill fort near Burklear with extensive views over the North Wessex Downs. One of the best known hill forts in England and the site of one of the beacons that formed a network across Hampshire. The firing of beacons on prominent hilltops was an integral part of the early defence and communication systems for Britain. The last chain of beacons was lit on the 5th of June 2012 to commemorate the Queen's Diamond Jubilee. The hill fort on top of the hill has never been excavated, 
but other surveying methods and techniques have revealed many huts and storage pits from the Iron Age Hill Fort residents. The ditch and the banks are still prominent and well preserved, with curving banks defending the entrance at the southern end of the site. Within the enclosure there is a grave of the 5th Earl of Carnarvon, who played a prominent part in the archaeological expeditions to Egypt, including his final trip to the Valley of the Kings. It was here where he and Howard Carter discovered and opened the fabulous tomb of Tutankhamun in 1922. The site is a chalky grassland habitat. Chalk grassland would have covered the large areas of downland in southern England, making good grazing for sheep. The mark of centuries of sheep grazing are on the slopes with a stepped appearance. This is formed by the mixture of soil creep and the lateral movement of sheep over the centuries. Such erosion is clearly visible on the slopes of Beacon Hill. Grazing is an important part of managing chalky grassland. The constant feeding of the animals stops scrub from taking over the grassland. The number of animals allowed to graze an area is an important consideration. Too many animals will cause the floral community to suffer. Too few animals will allow the scrub to encroach. So there we go. I think uh, I think out of all the videos I've ever made, I think that one probably has to be amongst one of the toughest. I'm going to try and find somewhere out of the wind because that wind is really cutting through me right now. I was literally up there about half an hour. I couldn't do much more than that. Uh, so I got my drone up and I was maybe 15, 20 minutes of drone flying, and that was it for me. I, I just had to get down. I just couldn't. I couldn't face it anymore. It was just too cold for me. So with, a, um, with my bones full of cold, I decided to uh, head um, to the nearest, uh, nearest good old pub. This is something which we do over here in the UK, in Britain. We do like our pubs and we like our real ale. So I fancied myself uh, a pint of real ale and sat next to the log burner. It's banging out some really good heat and it was just such a nice place to be on a really, really cold day. I try and warm my bones up. And I was there for about maybe 25 minutes, half an hour. And that was enough for me then it was kind of on my way but you know it, it, um, it, it gets me thinking really you know with the freedom which I've got which I'm able to 
get out and experience these things. You know, this is all which, which, which makes us who we are. And I'm really concerned with what's going on at the moment, especially in Oxford and other places, these test cities for a, a, a potential lockdown of vehicles in a sense, because you know, they just want us to, uh, they don't want us to drive our vehicles. They want us to stay put really, unless you want to walk or you, or you want to ride your bike somewhere. Well, not every person can do that. You know, I, I think these people are trying to take away our liberties and all we're doing is just sitting back and and letting it happen. I mean, where is the backbone gone? I'm shocked. Uh, am, am, am I surprised? I don't suppose I am anymore. But I'm more disappointed to see that nobody's really standing up for this. Nobody's really talking about it. It's not on. It's not in the mainstream media news. This is a this is a violation, really, ag against our our freedoms to of movement. And I know this sounds like a bit of a rant. You know, it probably is really, but. You know, when they start to do things like this to us, you just got to think, well, where's it going to end? How far are they going to take this? If they're going to take our liberties away, where we cannot drive, where we want to drive, when we want to drive to these places, if they're going to do that to us and nobody's going to do anything about it, stand up to it, then you've got to think to yourself, well, where does it end? It's a, we live in worrying times. Anyway, um, I don't want to cause any fear to anyone. I just want to give people a bit of information what is going on because you might not always hear these things in the mainstream media anyway so that's basically enough for me on this video i just want to say thanks for watching and take care and as always i'll see you on the next one and bye for now